All right, so in the last video in part two, you completed your inlet. And now by the end of this tutorial, you will have uh, modified your inlet and added a little of a keychain slot or some arc slot. So for the goals of this video, you're going to finish your inlet of the Benchy, use construction lines, use the coincident constraint, use the arc sketch tool, and use the rectangle pattern tool. All right, so picking up from last video, we ended with this. So what we're going to do now is that we want to get rid of this. We want to create that how the inlet goes inwards right here. It's not blocked off by this side as you saw from um, the beginning of the video. So what we can do instead of sketching um, and projecting this rectangle and extruding cut, what we can do is actually just extrude directly. So we just click E for extrude, select this face and just drag and it'll already cut away. So that just saves a bunch of time and it's very efficient to get that. And now what we're going to do next is create the holes right here. So we're going to create a sketch on this face. <clears throat> P for project so we can uh, work with the lines. And what we're going to do before I start dragging in some lines is I'm actually going to do construction lines along the midpoints of uh, my vertical and rectangle uh, horizontal lines of my rectangle. So I've created the lines right here and as you can see it created di four different profiles so I can select them individually. What we're going to do is select both of these uh, lines and click right here construction, press it and you can see how they turn from a solid line to a dotted line. That shows that it's a construction line. And now remember how we had the four individual squares? Now it just fusion ignored these lines. Uh, and then we can select the entire profile. So this becomes really useful when you're extruding or doing something and instead of having to select everything that because there's so many intersections between your lines and everything, you can just directly select your profile. What I'm going to do next is start putting my circles down. So I'm just going to click C. I'm going to put two circles right here. And what I want circle to be is to be a big circle in the mid plane and tangent right here in the bottom like this. So what we're going to do is use the code incident tool. I want to say that this center of the circle is touching this line, is on this line, the construction line. And now it's stuck vertically, it can only move up and down. So in order to have this, uh, the, the bottom of the circle touching down this line, we have to use the tangent constraint. So I'm going to select the circle and the bottom edge. And now this remains tangent to the bottom. And now we have to dimension it to 5.5 millimeters, 5.5, all right. <clears throat> For this circle, I want this diameter, to, di diameter of the circle to be three millimeters. And I want from the center of both of these circles um, horizontally to be four millimeters. And then I want to be four millimeters away vertically. So I dimensioned those, and now we have two of our circles. You can also uh, make up any circles you want. Um, I'll show you what else you can do to customize your um, inlet. I'm going to drop in another circle on the upper top right here. I'm going to dimension it seven millimeters um, from the big circle to this uh, new circle, seven. And I want to dimension from this to the mid uh, line, vertical midline, seven as well. And I want to dimension this to be one millimeter. And now we have that constrained. What I want is more multiples, multiples of this circle around here. But instead of having to do manually again, you know, dimension and constraint, what we can do is go on the create and click rectangular pattern. It's going to say what objects do I want to uh, pattern. I want to select this. The direction is going to uh, tell you to select an edge. Um, it shouldn't matter from vertical or horizontal. I'm just going to select this. And now what I can do is that I can drag these arrows up. And you see how they will pattern around in rows and columns. We can customize to how many objects that we want uh, by selecting arrow and selecting quantity. So if I want five, if I want uh, two, I want to select three. Um, per row and for my column I only just want two per quantity. What I'm going to do now is do spacing. So extend as you for 
what's the distance from your first object to your last object how far is it from here and spacing just says how much what's the distance from your first one to your next one and the next one to your next one it's just the spacing for the spacing between this i'm going just going to keep it seven oops seven and same goes right here since uh now it's right negative seven because it's um point of going downwards negative seven and i'm going to before i click ok notice how this circle is interfering with in the bigger circle you can see these little check boxes we can actually uncheck them to suppress them meaning they won't appear just like if i were to uncheck this it won't appear then i click ok and you can come up with any uh, rectangular patterns add as many as whole you want anyway so we have our all holes created finish sketch e for extrude and we're we'll select the holes notice how if we kept our construction line solid we have to select here and here and here and here because it intersects in as well here so the construction lines really play a big role in 3d designing and it's a really important habit to build so i'm going to cut away and click ok so the last thing before in this video is just to create that little slot so i'll create a new sketch on this bottom phase of the boat I'm going to look at it from the top and what we can do is place down a rectangle right here and I'm going to project um, right here these edges so I can have something to dimension on Fusion recognize these lines and what I'm going to dimension from this vertical edge from here is just 2.5 millimeters and I want the length of this rectangle to be 20 and I want to be the height of the rectangle to be 10. And now this can still move up, up and down. The reason why I projected is now I can make a construction line from the midpoint of this. I want this rectangle to be in the middle. So I'm going to hover around with the mouse and you can see that triangle that's for the midpoint. I'm just going to drag. This is just my construction line, not a big deal. Click that and click select construction. So what I'm going to do is select, create another point on the rectangle and on the midpoint. And what you can do is either use the coincidence tool to say point intersects or lies on this construction line. Or you can select the horizontal slash vertical constraint and say this midpoint and this midpoint that we projected are uh, in line with each other. Now I wanted to create this little um, <coughs> arc or around an edge there's two ways you can do on about it what you can do is the first method is by creating an arc so you go on the create and under arc and click three point arc i'm going to select this the bottom and the uh, top uh point as my endpoints and now i just drag across and now <clears throat> since i want these uh this arc just going off uh just finishing off touching the lines perfectly and smoothly I'm going to use a tangent constraint. So I'm going to select this arc and this line and the same thing with here. But it's already constrained and that's how you can do it. You can also select this and make a construction line so you don't have to select the top half and the second half when you're extruding. Another way you can go on about creating this circle is, is, well, oh, sorry, I have to turn back this on. So if from starting with the rectangle, what you can do is create another circle click here in the midpoint and you just uh, dimension it or make them tangent works either way if you wanted to dimension it it would be a diameter of 10 and then if you don't want this sticking out and same goes for this you can turn this into construction line or you can click X select your line and click X to make a construction line same goes when you want to make a construction line to sell a line again if you don't want this, what you can do is use a trim tool and get rid of that away. And now we have a little arc slot created. And we're going to do the same thing, extrude away and just cut. It's okay if you go beyond um, what you're cutting for, as long as you're getting what you need. And that just wraps up for this uh, part in the Benchy Boat series. In the next video, we'll start creating our captain's room on top right here. See ya.